you thinking on the right track for these. I have rewrite x equals 5 as a new equation by manipulating each side of the equation using properties or operations. Do uh, Only do one step. <clears throat> How could I change this equation? It's still going to be x equals 5, but I'm going to change both sides. What's something that I could do? Jillian, what's something I could do to both sides of this equation? I'm just like, whatever you want. You're manipulating it. As long as you do it to both sides, you can do anything you want. Add one. Add one. Okay, so x plus one would equal five plus one. Or x plus one equals six. There, I manipulated that equation. X. <clears throat> Madison, can you help me manipulate x equals five? A different way. Okay, so 2x equals 10. It's manipulated. Still says x equals 5. Just looks a little different. Cameron, can you help me do a different one? Okay. So if I do 5 minus 6, x minus 6 equals negative 1. x would still be 5. So we've used addition. This is the addition property of equality. We've used the multiplication property of equality. We've used the subtraction property of equality. Is there any other things I could do? Uh, Matthew? I could square both sides. Would x still equal 5 here? x would equal plus or minus 5. That's not the same. But this is what's going to happen today <clears throat> is you're going to manipulate these equations and if you add stuff, you multiply stuff, you subtract stuff, is fine. But occasionally you have to square both sides. If you do square both sides, you're going to get an extra answer that really isn't an answer. <coughs> So what you do need to do is you need to check solutions. You will not be checking them on um, Desmos. I'm going to show you how to check them by hand because when you um, take the quiz on this stuff, it's going to be by hand. You can check them on Desmos when you're done, but I'm going to show you how to check them by hand. Okay, this is really what I was looking to get to today. So good job. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to write, rewrite as a single trigonometric function and solve for all angles, okay? So I'm looking at 9 minus 12 sine x equals 4 cosine squared x. We can try factoring this, and in order to factor it, everything has to equal what? Zero. If I were going to factor this, I would probably want my squared term to come first. So I'm going to do minus 9, add 12, sine x. <clears throat> so I have three terms, but I can't factor it. Why? If I try u substitution, what would u equal? Cosine x. So I would have 0 equals 4u squared plus 12 sine x minus 9. Do you see what I'm saying? We have a problem. So u substitution is not going to work because this is not going to factor. But I can manipulate it so it will factor. I can manipulate it. You know what cosine squared also equals? 1 minus sine squared, yeah? The that green identity. So u equals 4 multiplied by 1 minus sine squared x plus 12 sine x minus 9. I'll have to simplify this a little bit. 4 minus 4. Oh, man, now it's on the other side. Shoot. Sine squared x. That's okay. I can fix it. 
plus 12 sine x plus 9. Still manipulating. I probably don't need to write out every single step, but I like to for you. <clears throat> Negative 4 sine squared x plus 12 sine x minus 5. Okay. I really don't like this being negative. How can I make it so it's not negative? What? Factor it out? Yeah, we could factor it out, but since this side equals zero, I can do even better. I just like divide everything by negative one, which would be the same thing as if I just added the four over here, subtracted the 12 over there, and added the five. It's the exact same thing. You can just divide out that negative one. Or, I mean, it's an equation. I could multiply both sides by negative 1 as well. So get 0 equals 4 sine squared x plus 12 sine x minus 5. So now if you used u substitution, it's going to work a little bit better. Using substitution, it's going to be 4u squared plus 12u minus 5. You don't have to use u sub. You can just factor it, but not everybody is able to do that. Like, it's hard to see it. So I'm going to get back by putting 2u and 2u to make 4u squared. Minus because of the signs, and then I have to have a 5 and a 1. I'm not quite sure which side 5. So then I'll check 10, and this will give me plus 2. Will that give me plus? Maybe 2. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That's what I was doing wrong. Why did I not do that? Question. <clears throat> okay, so that tells me those signs are going to be negative. So those two numbers I just had before, they're actually be negative 10 and negative 2, which does equal negative 12. So you know this is not really what it is. It's instead of 2u minus 1, what is it? 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0, and 2 sine x minus 5 equals 0. So sine x equals a half, and sine x equals 5 halves. It's 30 is the reference, but we've got two places for positives. Pi over 6 and pi pi over 6. Two and a half. You don't know? What's the highest that sign can equal? One. So where is it two and a half? Huh? Nowhere. Right. Throw that out. <clears throat> and we get pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Okay, so this is the same stuff you were just doing. I just had to use one of those um, identities signs first. I get doable. <clears throat> so here's my next one. I've got 2 tangent squared x minus 3 secant x plus 3. Right now, this is three terms which is usually like a guess and check factoring, except we have tangent squared and then we have a secant. So what can we change so they're both the same? Hold on. Tangent squared is what? Equal to what? Minus 1 or plus 1? Like minus 1? Okay. So we're going to do <coughs> 2 secant squared x minus 1 minus <coughs> 3 secant x plus 3. I'm going to distribute. Okay. 
and then I'm going to combine my like terms and put it in order. 2 secant squared x minus 3 secant x plus 1. So now, if you want to do u substitution to help you factor it, you can. Or if you can actually <clears throat> guess and check factoring it without u substitution, that's fine. I know that both signs are going to be minus, and I know that the last numbers have to be 1. And then to get 2 secant squared x, one of them is going to have to be 2 secant x, and the other is going to have to be secant x. It's the same way you're going to do it if it was u sub substituted. So if you did u substitution, you just went through the exact same thing. Okay, and then at this point, I'm going to do 2 secant x equals 1, secant x equals 1, so secant x equals a half. I don't know my secants. I'm going to change it into cosines. Cosine x is 1, and cosine x is 2. What do I do about cosine x equals 2? Evan, when is cosine x equals 2? When is cosine x equal to? Never. Never. Right. Bye. Okay, um, when is cosine x equal to 1? This says that we are going from 0 to 2 pi, so my only answer is 0. <clears throat> you good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> this one, we've got cosecant x plus cotangent x equals 1. Ideas. Katie? Okay, so then I have 1 plus cosine x over sine x equals 1. I'm trying to solve for either sine x or solve for cosine x. Can I replace one for the other? <coughs> like, why can't I replace like sine x with 1 minus cosine? Because it's not squared. So this was a good thought, but it didn't get me anywhere. Let's look back at the original. Is cosecant x and cotangent x related in any way? Besides what we just did, it's got to be related in a different way. <clears throat> you know? Can I change cotangent x into cosecant squared x minus 1? I'm pausing. What's wrong? Yeah, it's not squared. I'm pretty much stuck here because we don't have a squared. But we can make a squared. How can I make a squared? You need to square both sides, but don't do it yet. It's going to be really ugly if you square both sides as is because if you just square both sides, you can't just square the two pieces. You have to write it twice and foil it out, which means I'm going to have an inside term that is still 2 cosecant x cotangent x. It's going to be awful. So I would highly recommend that if you're going to square both sides, you move the um, uh, trigonometric ratios to the other side first. The number one, it doesn't matter what side that's on, but when you go to square both sides, it's going to be easier for you to do it this way. So to square both sides, cosecant squared is very easy. That's cosecant squared x. But on the other side, we are going to have to write it twice, and you're going to have to use your FOIL method of multiplying so you don't kill a puppy. 
We have to FOIL it out. That's going to give me 1 minus 2 cotangent x plus cotangent squared x. I did it really fast for time purposes. So when I look at it this way, what should I change into the other one? What do you guys think? Cosecant squared x? What should I make that into? 1 plus? It's 1 plus on there? Okay. <laughs> I don't have those parts memorized and they're not on my desk. 1 plus cotangent squared x equals 1 minus 2 cotangent x plus cotangent squared x. So now we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract cotangent squared x from both sides. You get 0 equals negative 2 cotangent x. <coughs> What should I do now? Still. Divide by negative 2. I, I, I don't know why, but I like when the 0 comes second, so I'm just going to move it around. <laughs> Cotangent x equals 0. All right, so where is that? Cotangent is the same thing as x over y. 0 has to be over a, a number. That means x has to be 0. Where is x 0 on this? pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, but I, what I told you and what you guys told me even on this first, on this first um, example we did with just real equations without the trig stuff, you, sa you said both of these didn't work when we squared it. So I guarantee both of them probably aren't going to work. So how do we check it? We're going to go back to the original equation. You do not go to the squared equation. You go back to the original, and we're going to plug in each of these um, angles. So I'm going to check cosecant of pi over 2 plus cotangent of pi over 2 to see if that equals 1. I'm also going to check cosecant of 3 pi over 2 plus cotangent at 3 pi over 2 to see if that equals 1. Now you should know what cotangent at pi over 2 is because you just told me backwards that it was pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So what answer is just the cotangent at pi over 2? What is the cotangent at pi over 2? It's right here. Cotangent at pi over 2 is what? It's 0, okay? Easy, easy. At 3 pi over 2, also 0. So that part's done. I just need to now find the cosecant at pi over 2 and the cosecant at uh, 3 pi over 2. So cosecant is the same thing as the reciprocal of sine. Here the ordered pair is 0, 1. This is 0, negative 1. So what is sine at pi over 2? So if I reciprocate 1, I still get 1. Does that one work? Yes. How about here? What's y? Negative 1. So if I reciprocate that, I still get negative 1. Does that one work? No. So we only have one answer. x equals pi over 2. So you check it by plugging back into the original. <clears throat> Let's just look at, like, the steps that would, and then not finish the rest of them, just like looking at the steps, like what would I change here? What would I change for this one? So 2 times 1 minus cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 3, and then you simplify and you factor and get some answers. How about this one? Subtract what? Cosecant? Why? Okay. But squaring them 
Cosecant and sine aren't a trigonometric uh, no identity. They're not a Pythagorean identity. It was cosecant and cotan that were the identities. So squaring might not help. When are sine and cosecant like related to each other? Identities are. <coughs> what is cosecant the same as? One over sine. Could we add those together? Not yet, but can I add those together? Finding a common denominator, multiplying this one by sine x over sine x. Um, 2 sine squared x plus 1 over sine x equals 0. When is sine x 0? No, yes. When is sine x 0? When is sine x 0? At zero and at pi. So if if I finish solving this and I get a zero or a pi, just heads up, if I get a zero or a pi, I have to throw it out because that would make the denominator zero, which would be undefined when I check it. Okay. But when I go to finish this one, what I would do is I would put zero over one and I would cross multiply. So it's not underneath anymore. When I cross multiply, I get two sine squared x plus 1 equals 0. Cross multiplication. And then from there you can, so you can solve it. Which I'm not going to finish because we've seen a bunch of solving today. Okay? But when you end up something like this, you can cross multiply to try to help you solve. And then I will pass out your sixth question add-on assignment.